Hello and welcome to the AI, your English news bulletin. I'm your host Akivito and these are the headlines. The Supreme Court on Tuesday issued notice to the center and asked it to respond on a batch of petitions seeking a court-monitored probe into the reports of the government allegedly using Israeli software Pegasus to spy on politicians, activists and journalists. The Nagaland Sustainable Development Goals Vision 2030 was launched by Nagaland Chief Minister Mr. Rio on August 17 at the Capital Convention Centre in Kohima. A mudslide disrupted normal life after it affected the regions between Tujang Vaichon and Selsi in Kangkokpi district of Manipur following overnight rains. Passenger vehicles are reportedly stranded at Tujang Vaichong area and commuters are set to continue by foot. Contraband worth 5 crore in the international market confiscated by the Customs Division of Imphal. According to the Customs Office, it has, the item has been identified as amphetamine, which is a banned substance often smuggled from Myanmar to Moray Town. The Naglin SDG Vision 2030 was launched by Naglin Chief Minister Nifirio, while the District SDG Localization and Integration Manual also was launched by Minister of Planning and Coordination, Land Revenue and Parliamentary Affairs Niba Krono. Of the Naglin SDG Vision 2030 and District SDG Localization and Integration Manual was conducted on Tuesday, August 17th at the Capital Convention Center in Kohima, organized by the SDG Coordination Center, Planning and Coordination Department. Addressing the event, Chief Minister Nifurio stated that the 17 goals and the 169 targets for sustainable development documented in the Nagaland SDG Vision 2030 are aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet and to ensure that everyone enjoys peace and prosperity. He added that in this direction, the Nagaland SDG Vision document will provide the state with specific, short, medium and long-term targets with measurable indicators and strategies that the state should focus on to meet the aspirations of the people for sustainable livelihood and living standards. Rio also said that there are major challenges that need to be addressed in order to meet the ambitious targets within the timelines, adding that the challenges against each goal have been highlighted in the document. Rio said that the northeastern states, especially the hill states, have lagged behind the rest of the country in terms of economic growth. One of the reasons for this is the low economic investments and Nagaland being a resource-constrained state, there is hardly any elbow room for the state government to meet the large investments needed for capital and infrastructure development in the state. It is, therefore, very important that the central government recognize the required flexibility in the funding and implementation of schemes for the Northeast Hill states, he added. Further, the Chief Minister said the central government will take note of the strategies and the challenges highlighted in the document and suitably customize the programs of the centrally sponsored and central schemes to cater to the special needs of the state that will positively impact livelihoods and quality of life of the people in the long run. The Chief Minister added that to reach the targets, a proper monitoring mechanism and a dashboard to view the progress against each of the 169 targets should be put into place on a regular basis. The Government of India and the UNDP will put a dedicated team in place to further guide the state so that its resources are optimally utilized with the targets in mind. Rio also mentioned that the state government also looks forward to further partnership and discussions on the SDG India Index 2020-2021 and the multi-dimensional Poverty Index. Alongside the release of the Naglin SDG Vision 2030 by Naglin Chief Minister Nifurio, the District SDG Localization and Integration Manual also was launched by Minister of Planning and Coordination Land Revenue and Parliamentary Affairs 
Minister Neva Krono on August 17th. Looking at the program, Minister Neva Krono stated that the Nagaland Vision 2030 document has been prepared highlighting priority areas to be achieved by 2030 with a key objective to carry out the SDG localization process across all districts and grassroots levels in the state. The Nagaland Vision 2030 document will serve as a strategic development plan for all the relevant departments to work coherently towards the achievement of the SDGs across the state. During the inaugural program, the advisor for SDGs, Niti Ayok Sanyukta Samadar, also highlighted the list of top performances. Nagaland State is set to be listed as the top performing state for Goal 12, Sustainable Consumption and Production, and a frontrunner for Goal 2, Zero Hunger. Goal 6, Clean Water and Sanitation, Goal 15, Life on Land, and others. Nagaland's overall score performance as per the SDG India Index 2020-2021 is 61% as compared to the nationwide average of 66. The corresponding figures for 2019 were 57 against the India-wide average of 60%. The launch of the Nagaland SDG Vision 2030 and District SDG Localization and Integration Manual was followed by a state-level workshop on SDG India Index 2020-2021 and multi-dimensional poverty index with resource persons from Niti Aayog. The key objectives of this workshop included discussions on Nagaland's SDG performance as per the SDG India Index 2020-2021 as well as the areas for improvement there. The workshop also discussed the programs, schemes and policies addressing the concept of multi-dimensional poverty in the state. Olympic bronze medalist Lovlina Borgoen arrived in Dimapur Airport on August 17, Tuesday, en route to her home. At the Dimapur Airport, several ASME's bureaucrats and legislators were present to welcome the Olympian. Let's have a look at more details. So, uh, sir, how do you feel about this achievement? Uh, it's a uh, great honor for us also, for the whole uh, Assam and Northeast as a whole. So, we are very proud of her. And uh, she is now arriving from Delhi. And she will be going to her home, ta home place. It's called Baramukhiya in uh, Barpathar area in our Sudan City Subdivision. So, we are now with, our, with us, uh, we have the representative of the state government. Uh, the Secretary Sir is with us. Uh, I am also present here. And also our Honorable uh, MLA from Saru Patar is also present. Uh, according her uh, a brief reception here, and we will welcome her and uh, with her convoy we will lead her to our uh, home, home place. How did the Assam government support her career as well? Yes, uh, Assam government has all along, along has, uh, uh, that means help her and now has announced a uh, cash award of uh, rupees uh, 1 crore also uh, in sorupatha in barpathar uh, some government is constructing a um, big uh, stadium in her name and also she will be supported from all all um, all corners Sir, uh, so basically you are from the sports uh, department, so I just want to ask, like, how after uh, Lovelina's achievement, how has the sports in the state have improved? Yeah, last week when we felicitated her at uh, Kalakhetra, Guwahati, next day Honorable Minister and with all the assistants and officers of the sports department and sports director, we had a brainstorming session. And uh, for your information, around 1300 crores of investment will be made. Uh, on uh, sports infrastructure and all. So one stadium in her name will be coming up yesterday. I visited the site also. And then uh, many uh, 40 stadium, stadia will be also constructed. And we are going to identify few major sports on which we can concentrate also. So basically I believe that this is other sports categories as well. Yes, yes, exactly. So few sports will be identifying. So but wherever we are having our strengths, we'll concentrate upon that also. So boxing is definitely one of them. Actually, Lavlina Borgo hai as pehli bar aayega Olympic medal jitne ke baad. Hamare liye isse zada khushi ka situation hai nahi, khushi ka mahal hai nahi. 
हम कोशिश करूँगा कि लाभलीना को इसे लगेगा कि जिंदगी का जो सबसे मेमोरेबल सिचुएशन है इसको भी हम इसे प्रिजर्व करने के लिए कोशिश कर रहा हूँ हम बरपथर में सेंट्रल फंक्शन ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहा हूँ वो जीतने के बाद पहली बार आ रहा है इसलिए हमारा हम भी खुशी में उसका साथ शामिल होंगे अच्छा एक फंक्शन होगा Union Home Minister of State for External Affairs, Education, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, on Tuesday acted, stated that the Act East policy would be implemented soon after the COVID-19 pandemic and to ensure development in the Northeast region. Singh, who is on his first visit to Nagaland, was speaking at a press conference at Hotel Jaffo on Tuesday in Kohima. He said he was on Ashirwad Yatra in the state to meet the people and also to seek their blessings. Singh underscored the vast natural resources within the northeastern region for potential foreign investment and stated that the states are yet to explore the rich resources. He spoke about how he was offered the portfolios of external affairs and education despite being from a non-Hindi speaking state which he said only affirms that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has keen interest in the development and progress of the northern states. He informed that the Prime Minister is implementing the new education policy to promote mother tongues of different groups in the northeastern states. He also apprised how some educational institutions and foreign countries could sign memorandums of understanding for promoting tourism or culture of the Northeast too. Further, Singh said that during his meeting with various civil society groups in Nagaland, many had expressed the desire to resolve the Indo-Naga political issue without delaying it further. He assured to carry forward the message to the higher-ups when he reaches Delhi. The minister also expressed serious concern at the inflow of illegal immigrants in the northeast while emphasizing on strict vigilance against such movement from other places. Later, the minister visited the cathedral in Koima and met with Dr. James Thopil, the bishop of Koima. Singh was accompanied by legislators and BJP leaders before he proceeded to Manipur. The governor of Nagaland, Arun Ravi, wishes the Sangtam community happiness, good health and prosperity as the tribe celebrates Hanapungpi festival. Extend greetings to the people of Nagaland, especially to the Sangtam community. The governor said the celebration of Hanapungpi festival is to display affection and care for one another. Children are the prominent participants in this festival whereby they learn to preserve the beautiful culture displayed in the form of folk songs, dances and traditional sports, he said. It provides an opportunity to understand and appreciate the beauty of the underlying ancient philosophies of the community, he said. Urging celebration of the festival by following COVID-appropriate behavior, Ravi wished the community and people all happiness, good health and prosperity. The Supreme Court on Tuesday issued notice to the centre and asked it to respond on a batch of petitions seeking a court-monitored probe into the reports of the government allegedly using Israeli software Pegasus to spy on politicians, activists and journalists. Headed by Chief Justice of India, N. V. Ramana said it will decide what to do in future including whether a government request for permission to set up a committee of independent experts to examine all aspects should be allowed. The bench said it will hear the matter after 10 days. During the hearing, the centre maintained that what software was used for the interception in the interest of national security cannot be open for public debate. 
The center added that it is willing to place the details of surveillance before the expert committee proposed to be constituted by it to examine the issues and the committee can give a report to the Supreme Court. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the government told the Apex Court that several kinds of softwares are used by government and militaries to check anti-national and terrorist activities. The Taliban on Tuesday announced a general amnesty for all Afghan government officials and urged them to return to work, including women corresponding with Sharia law. The comments by Enamullah Samangani, a member of the Taliban's Cultural Commission, represent the first comment on governance in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover of the country on Sunday, reported France 24. They should restart their routine life with full confidence, Saman Ghani said in announcing the amnesty. Women were also allowed to join the government in accordance with Sharia law. He said that they should be in the government structure according to the Sharia law. Afghanistan's leading TV nation, Tolo News, on Tuesday broadcasted a news program with a female anchor interviewing a member of the Taliban's media team. The structure of government is not fully clear. But based on experience, there should be a fully Islamic leadership and all sides should join, he added. Saman Ghani remained vague on other details, however implying people already knew the rules of Islamic law the Taliban expected them to follow, reported France 24. Taliban have been vague in pronouncements on how they would rule Afghanistan, apart from saying it would be in accordance with Islamic principles. Older generations remember the ultra-conservative Islamic regime that saw regular stoning, amputations and public executions during Taliban rule before the US-led invasion that followed the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. Under the Taliban, which ruled in accordance with a harsh interpretation of Islamic law, women were largely confined to their homes. The insurgents have sought to project greater moderation in recent years, but many of guns remain skeptical, reported France 24. Mudslide disrupted normal life after it affected the regions between Tujang Vaichon and Selsi in Kangpokpi district of Manipur following overnight rains. Passenger vehicles are reportedly stranded at Tujang Vaichon area and commuters are set to continue by foot. The local people there have appealed to the state government to help in clearing the mud and debris from the affected areas. People including women and children reportedly are reported to be walking in knee-deep mud to reach their homes and marketplaces. The locals said that several farms situated in the areas have been demolished by mud running down from hilltops. Further, people going to the farms and local markets have to carry loads on their shoulders. Locals said that since morning, many women and children have suffered severe injuries while trying to cross the mudslide affected areas. Big logs and sharp rocks that run down from the mountains often cause injuries to commuters, update stated. The people there have appealed to the state government and the district administration for rescue and relief as soon as possible and to give compensation to the people who have lost their properties. Union Minister of State for Steel and Rural Development, Fagan Singh Kulaste, inspected various projects that were undertaken under the Shama Prasad Mukherjee Rurban Mission in Kangabok, Rurban, Cluster, August 17, Tuesday. The minister was accompanied by State Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Minister Thongam Biswajit Singh and officials of the departments in concern during the inspection. The team inspected the overhead water tank at Kangabok Water Supply Scheme, overhead water tank at Sangayumpam Water Supply Scheme at Kangabok Cluster, Tubal District and a primary health center, Tentha. Also, Kulaste attended an interaction program with members of various self-help groups at Ebudo Thongju Lakpa Community Hall. Briefing media persons after the interaction, Kulaste said, that as reported in other parts of the country, Manipur also has a huge number of self-help groups and the message is that these SHGs will facilitate increasing employment in the state. The robust growth of SHGs is a big achievement for the country, especially for women folk. He said, adding that it was the Prime Minister's vision that the land can achieve women's empowerment only when they are empowered financially. 
he explained that the SHG is a concept to facilitate women in starting a business to improve the financial condition of their families and help them become financially independent. Contraband worth 5 crore in the international market confiscated by the Customs Division of Imphal. According to the Customs Office, the item has been identified as amphetamine, which is a banned substance often smuggled from Myanmar through Moray Town. Contraband substances are often smuggled out from the border town of Moray. They are said to have value in big metropolitan cities like Delhi, Mumbai, etc. The substance was caught from one H.L. Shongkong Mate, 31 years a resident of Teng Nupal Bazar in Chandel district of Manipur. According to the Customs Division of Imphal, on August 17th, the officers of the anti-smuggling unit of the Customs Division intercepted Mate carrying a blue color cement bag at Kakching Lamkai. On searching the cement bag, the customs officer found three brown color packets and two black color packets and recovered 50,000 amphetamine tablets weighing approximately 5 kilograms from the packets. A case has been registered and Mate has been arrested under relevant sections of the NDPS Act of 1985. The value of the seized contraband drugs is estimated to be around Rs 5 crore. Further investigation to nab the other offenders is going on, updates stated. And that was all the news in the eye. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Hornbill TV.